Hi guys and welcome to another monthly wrap up video. So February is coming to an end so it's time to do my monthly book haul and wrap up video and as I promised today I'm also going to show you some of the stuff I got at the Harry Potter studio tour in London that I visited so let's dive into this. So I already showed you guys that I got this tour guide. So it's a book full of things that are interesting about your tour, about the props and sets that you can see there. And it's really nice to look into it afterwards. So if you have visited the tour already, you can read up a little bit about things that you might have missed or things that you have forgotten or extra little details about all the things that you have seen during that amazing tour. So it is really something you should consider if you're visiting the tour. You can also include them when you are buying tickets online. So we did as well. So you can buy a regular ticket with an audio guide and one of these. So we got lucky and we got two of them. So me and my boyfriend each have a copy of those. So it's really nice just to read along and think back on the tour that you had. Secondly, we each bought a Harry Potter wand. So my boyfriend got the Sirius Black one and I got the Genie Weasley wand. So we didn't buy them at the tour themselves because we already went to the nine and three quarter shop in King's Cross station. We saw the ones there so my boyfriend bought his wand that day, the first day that we went. And I first looked into the wands at the studio tour themselves. But in the nine and three quarter uh, shop in King's Cross there's this little plate with them that you can use as a stand for your wand. So I really liked it because I don't just want to leave it in the box. So I'll show you guys. So this is the box that it comes in. So you have the label with the name of the person whose wand it is that you're buying. So it comes out like this. And Jeannie's wand is this dark green color. And then you open it up and it's like this and the little plate. So if you take it out. So this is a little plate. So for Jeannie Weasley. You can do it like this, and then you can use this as a book as a wand stand. So you can do like this, and you can place it on your bookshelves like this. So I think this is more pretty because if you want to display the wand itself, you can do it like this. So you can use the stand with the plate of the name of the owner of the wand instead of just putting it in the box. Some of the boxes from the Olive Wonder collection are very pretty, but I thought this was. A better option for me because I really want to display it on my bookshelves so I bought it at the nine and three quarter shops not at the studio tour itself and then the last thing we bought were these coasters so there are four coasters so they're metallic so they're very durable and it's not only for the Gryffindor but it's the four houses so there are four coasters in a pack uh, you have one for each of the houses so Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw so you can also see them here at the back how they look like. Apart from the tour we also went to see a little bit more of London and whilst doing that I visited the bookshop Waterstones. So it's a very big bookshop so it's uh, four or five floors with uh, all the books so uh, every genre is there, everything you, uh, you are looking for is there. So uh, we went there and I set a limit of three books for myself because I know otherwise I would come home with another suitcase full of books. So I bought three books there. So the first book I bought was Everless by Sarah Holland. This book is about a society where time is extracted from blood and made into iron coins. So time is used as a currency in this kingdom. And I thought it was a very different idea than any other book I've read before. The only thing it reminds me of is the movie In Time that came out a few years ago. And I did enjoy the movie so I thought maybe it is a good idea to start a fantasy novel from. So I'm very stoked to start this one and I read very good things about it already so I hope it will live up to expectations. So the next two books I bought are older books so they have come out before but I'm only now coming to them to buy them. So I saw them circulating at my workplace. A lot of my colleagues are reading the third one that has just come out, Hero at the Fall. But I only bought the first two because my limit was three and I just had to have Everless. So first of all we have Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. So it's a um, trilogy at the moment and it's located in the desert and it's about genies and it really has an Arabian night kind of vibe to it. So I, I haven't 
uh, read anything like this before but I saw it circulating a lot on Bookstagram, Booktube as well as at my workplace so I thought I would give it a try so I bought the first two of them so Rebel of the Sands and then the second one Traitor to the Throne and the third one has just come out Hero to the Fall so a lot of my colleagues are reading that one and I thought I would join them in this quest. So I was lucky enough that the bookshop sh Waterstones has signed copies which weren't anything extra so that's always nice if you have a signed book copy of these. So both of them are signed. Also the third one was already out there as well and was also signed but like I said I had a limit of three books I kept myself to it so the third one I will be buying at work after I read the first two if I like it or not. And then the last thing I acquired this month that has something to do with books are book sleeves. So I got two book sleeves from work. So they look like this. And if you open them up, one side is sealed shut. So the front cover has to go in here. And then the back is magnetic so you can adjust it to the book size that you want. You close it up and then you can bind it shut with these. So I got the smaller one for small paperbacks and then the bigger one for the hard copies that I have. So that was it for books and bookish goodies I bought this month. I also read a little bit this month but not as much as I wanted to because I was sick a few days so I couldn't bring myself to reading a lot. I just rested a lot and watched some movies. So I own a book this month which is Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I did enjoy this book but I had some problems with it because it dragged a little. It was a little bit too slow for me before anything happened. But again, as some other books previously had, the last couple of chapters were very good. So I will be picking up the second one, All the Wandering Lights. But the first one I only gave a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was a good book, it had a good setting, but it just it was too long before something really happened. I did like the plot twist at the end, uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything. If you want my full review you can always check it out on my blog, I will link it down below. So this book is about a girl named Kamzin, she wants to be the royal explorer for the emperor and she gets a chance to go on a quest with the current royal explorer. So they set out to find this relic on top of the mountain Rajka, one of the most difficult and dangerous climbs in the empire and they come across all kind of difficulties. So it was a really nice book but I just expected a little bit more of it but the end was very enthralling so I will be picking up the second book All the Wandering Lights which is coming out I think at the end of this year so I am watching out for that one, but I just hope it is a bit more exciting than this one. So this one was a good enjoyable read but it wasn't as exciting as I hoped it would be. And at the moment I am reading The Last Tudor by Philippa Gregory. So this book follows uh, Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Days Queen. So I'm very happy that I am picking this one up now because I just went to London and we visited the Tower of London which you can see over here. So those are the towers from the White Tower which is inside the Tower of London. And I just really like that spot in London. It is one of my favorite places to go if I am in London. So this book follows, as I said, Lady Jane Grey. She's the cousin of uh, Mary Elizabeth and Edward, so the children of Henry VIII. So she has uh, been queen for nine days and this is following her journey from childhood until adolescence and also her two sisters. So um, I don't really know for sure because I'm not very far into it, but I think we followed uh, Lady Jane Grey the first two chapters uh, of the book and afterwards we follow the two sisters, how they uh, cope with the loss of their sister and with the two reigning queens, so Queen Mary or Bloody Mary and Queen Elizabeth afterwards. And I hope it can just take me back a little bit to my holiday in London. Okay, so that was it for my monthly wrap-up video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions about the books I uh, read or I bought, you can always ask me in the comments down below. And if you want a more elaborate review of uh, Even the Darkest Stars, you can also check out my blog. Link is down in the description as well. And I hope to see you guys soon. Okay, bye!